Hi guys, it's Sam and I'm back with another video for Lawn Fawn. Today I am going to make a card using the new Wolf Before and Afters Wild Wolves stamp set plus the old uh, but good <laughs> Really High Five and Party Animal stamps and dies. I'm also using the Peekaboo pop-up um, die set which I had never used before and it was so fun. As usual, I am starting by coloring all my images. I stamped a lot of images and I use most of these. I think there's one or two wolves I don't end up using as well as um, the trees. I really, I had high hopes for these trees. I really envisioned them on the card, but um, it just, they didn't make it. <laughs> I thought it would be so cute to create this uh, birthday themed card with these wolves and I wanted to color the balloons in the same um, shade as the moons, you know, so these wolves were looking like they were holding little moon balloons in, in a little homage to the moon because they love howling at the moons. <laughs> and I thought that was so cute. So I started by coloring all of these gray and then set them aside to dry. Um, I also am going to use a lot of stars in the background of my card. So I am coloring all of the stars. I mean, they're so tiny. It's so easy, but I am still using a little bit of brown for the shading of the stars and then one shade of yellow to, and then using, um, a water brush to pull it all out. Once the moon and the balloons were dry, I decided I did not want to keep them gray. I wanted to add a little bit of color to the card. So I'm just adding just a little bit of yellow on top of what was already colored gray. And so it is kind of a muted, I don't know, spooky color, if you will. It's, it's, it was fun. It was, I hadn't done it before and I kind of like how it came out because I did not want an all yellow moon. I wanted it to be a little bit muted because it is, you know, nighttime but the moon does reflect the sun's light, so I wanted it to have a little bit of color. So anyway, that's what I did. <laughs> um, next up, I'm just coloring all of the wolves, and I color them all, all the same way. Two different shades for most of the wolf, two different shades of gray for most of the wolves, and then um, a different light gray for the um, like muzzle and little floofy in their chest. And that is not a technical term. <laughs> I am also adding pink cheeks to the wolves. These wolves are so cute and you could have totally, I could have totally done without the pink cheeks, but it is almost like second nature to me and I didn't realize I was doing it until it was already done. So it stays and I love it. And, and that's what it is. That's all there is to it. I am using a dark gray for the darker parts of the wolf, then using a damp water brush to pull it out, and then using the same dark gray in the same spots that were shaded, but then using my very light gray to pull it out. And that just adds a little bit of depth um, and contrast to the images. For the light gray parts, I'm just using light gray, uh, the light gray marker in the, the areas I want the uh, shadow, quote unquote, and then not using it in the middle. I'm just using my damp water brush to pull it all out and meet up. And that's it. I mean, these were <laughs> so easy and fast to color. I, like I said, they all were the same. I went with the... <laughs> the gray wolf and um loved how they turned out they're so cute I do, I do end up going back and adding a dark gray in between those little howling mouths but I kind of regretted it as soon as I did it <laughs> but I mean it is what it is it's no big deal <laughs> but um that's what happened there uh next I am going to move on to coloring the trees and so this is my, you know, same technique. I am just using my mid color where I want the shaded areas, pulling it out with a damp water brush, going on top of that with my dark 
darkest shade, the same areas, you pull, um, pulling that out with my mid color and then using the lightest color to pull out everything else. That is what I do, it's very simple. When I use my water brush and when I'm pulling out the color, even with a lighter shade of marker, I'm always doing it in a circular motion. And that kind of eliminates any kind of brush strokes or harsh lines. And so here I'm just using my dark color to pull it out and then I'm using the mid color to pull that out and then the lightest color to in a, in a circular motion to pull, you know, pull out the final the final color. The last thing to color is this little rock. I'm using black and the same gray I used for the darker shades of the wolves. Next up is the exciting part. I am now moving on to the Peekaboo pop-up die set, and I'm just showing you everything I die cut from 80 pound white cardstock. I am, I die cut with the large rectangle three times the bases. I used the smallest arm, which I'll show in a minute, and then I have a strip of acetate that I just cut with my scissors. I am just showing you that I use the smallest arm and then I'm folding those corners towards me. So everything is folded towards me. I also used the stitch hillside die that comes with it to die cut the taller large rectangle. As you can see, it's, it's the one that I'm not ink blending right now. And then I used a regular stitch till side from the, you know, just the stitch till side dies to die cut this smaller one. And I just need, I just thought that that would add a fun second little hillside to this scene if I stacked them up um, next to each other. And I really like how it turned out. So I'm just ink blending. I'm using Twisted Citron, Mowed Lawn, Pine Needles, and then for this taller one, I'm bringing up the darker colors a little bit higher so that there's a contrast between those two. As you can see, it's darker in the back and lighter in the front. And I'm just going to um, wipe up the area. And now I'm just going to ink blend the other large rectangle that I did not die cut. This will be the sky and I'm using squeezed lemonade in a kind of loose circular motion. It's going to be the glow behind the moon. Doesn't have to be perfect. And now I'm going to do the rest of the sky and I'm using Uncharted Mariner, Peacock Feathers, and Salvage Patina. I end up using a little bit of black soot at the end as well just to, you know, emphasize the nighttime-ness of the sky. But um, as you can kind of see, the two perforated lines on this background are on the right when the card is facing the correct way. Now I'm turning it all <laughs> all over but the so the darkest shade of this sky is on the right and that's where the two perforated lines are the perforated lines on the grasses are on the left and that's going to be important when I go to put this card together so I'm just blending all my colors together I'm not going completely over the yellow but I am getting uh over the ends of the yellow because I do want it you know to have that glow and I'm just adding black soot to the very edge of the card and then using the same colors to just smooth everything out for the final ink blending. Now it's time to put it together. Here are the two perforated lines on the stitched hills and here is the perforated lines on the background. We're gonna fold along those with our bone folder. And for the hills, we're gonna fold in kind of a valley form, which is Kelly Marie's term and it's perfect. And I'm folding both of the hills so that they have a, a valley when, filled in, when, when folded. And for the sky I'm folding in the opposite way, I want the middle fold to be up like a mountain. And that is how the card is going to be, create the swing motion. And I'm first going to attach the bottom hill to the top hill with just some tape runner and then I'm going to run my bone folder over the edges just to make sure the fold still works and I'm going to add some adhesive some tape and glue just to that one strip and fold it down and hold it in place and then we can move on to adding the rest of the card. Next I'm just going to add this arm to the underside of the hills on my card. I am going to attach the strip of acetate that I just trimmed with my scissors to the arm. Um, 
I do trim the white part of the arm, but I actually trim more of it later, and I'll explain that momentarily. But I'm just adding a little bit of uh, adhesive to that one corner of the triangle. Then I'm lining it up with the edge of the hill right underneath the stitched part. And look, it hides perfectly. <laughs> As you can see, it's a little long, so I'm going to trim the acetate, and I actually end up trimming the white part that was die cut all the way, basically all the way to the base of that triangle, and then adhering the acetate directly to the to the um, triangle there, so that it is so that none of the white is shown when it pops up, and it is perfect. <laughs> I add the moon to the top, and it just pops right up, and um, you can't see any of the white and it just looks like it's floating in the sky. Look, so cute. <laughs> Next, I'm just adding all the stars to the background of my card. There's really no plan here. I'm just making sure that they're not too near each other. They're not all lined up on the same, you know, line horizontally or vertically. Just kind of sprinkling the stars all over so that it looks like a, a very full starry sky for this birthday party. And I even put a little star behind the moon so that there's something there when it's hidden. <laughs> when the moon is all the way folded down, you can see it still sticks up above the hill. But I am going to hide that little guy with these cute little wolves. I'm just adding adhesive to the bottom parts of their feet and then attaching it to the hill that way. Then I'm going to add this small balloon from Really High Five in the little hidden nook of the card, which I think is adorable. And then I'm attaching everything else to my card, just creating the scene. No foam tape here. The card itself is pretty dimensional, so everything's just being glued directly to the card. And I keep playing with it. <laughs> I love this little birthday party for the wolves and their little homage to the moon with their balloons in my head. This is like a birthday party for the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Here's where I try to add all those trees, but figure that they really would just take away from the scene, so I did not add them <laughs> in the end. And um, as always, it's time to add my sentiment. I always do that last. I am heat embossing the It's Your Day, Live Life to the Fullest, because it's a full moon, and that sentiment just, like, cracked me up. And I am heat embossing it in white onto some black licorice cardstock. And I cut it down in strips and attached it right over where that moon is. And that's the card. Look how cute. I really I have to say I was intimidated to use this die. And this is my first time. And it was so fun and so easy. And I can't wait to make another one. Thank you so much for watching along and bearing with me <laughs> through my trials and tribulations. I hope that you had fun. I hope this inspires you. Be sure to check it out on the Lawn Fawn blog and have a great day. Bye!